I guess it's time for the uh, final final noise of of this uh, party, which is um. Good Who's one. It? Good one. All right. So uh, last we left off, you had uh, decide you had a uh, made your way uh, from uh, Seneca to Regents to stop off in Regents to pick up some supplies uh, and uh, get some information. So uh, then you made your way to Custer as quick as you could, but the help of Regents uh, and their goop by uh, making your uh, your uh, the nowhere uh, both invisible and incredibly fast <laughs> to shoot past the, the battle lines and arrive at Custer, which is uh, currently uh, in uh, heavy, heavy uh, in heavy lockdowns, the dire straits. Uh, the Battle lines have gotten very close to them, and uh, there's a big move about to be made at any moment. You met with Inspector Keys with information on what Gamble's plan was to uh, hijack the uh, sleeping, the dormant uh, clockwork giant in the giant monastery. And he said that, uh, well, there's a major offensive planned in a week. So you, uh, if, if, if you, you have, you know, until then to like think of something or do something or if you or if you uh if your plan is to for them we'll we, we can make try to make an opening for you uh that's what you agreed and then uh the the thought was raised that there are uh wind tunnels uh that lead that you can catch from the wall from the top of the walls of custer that will lead to above the giant's monastery that you might be able to take advantage of to uh get in there soon to get in there and uh, try and perhaps reason with the monks uh, to help you out or come to some sort of agreement with them uh, that you resolve to uh, perhaps act on uh, later. Later, uh, It was revealed to Aegis that the Nowhere has sails on it for catching the wind. Uh, but Aegis is, I believe, considering a uh, more personal approach at first for recon. Yeah, scope the joint out. Now, something uh, I should ask: Did did you present uh, keys with the letter from Emberwell? Uh, let's say I shall. Okay, you did that. Good. Good to know. Oh, or or or, 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 or wait, you didn't, or you you're going to, or well, uh, can you give me a reminder? The letter is totally blank to my mind. Uh, basically, they told you, okay. Uh, as as uh, in return for using the warp, the warp gate, uh, they uh, you were handed a letter to present to Inspector Keys that uh, basically get, was a report on what happened in Emberwell, what ha like what they like, basically about how you showed up in Emberwell, found out there was a dark firm, uh, the that was connected to Gamble, and how Emberwell uh, graciously helped you and uh, made sure that, uh, that, that that they were taken care of. I guess, yeah, Aegis would give that over to Keys, even if they, they, are short, they are ticking off a little bit of the responsibility of... I mean, a lot of it's true. They just aggrandize themselves a bit in there. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah, we did, right? Please don't stop doing business with us. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to make those robots. Hell yeah. Someone. Okay, okay, so good, good, good. You did that. Alright. So, we are now left with this idea. So, Aegis, you were considering a uh, reconnaissance. Yeah. Ascent, yeah, we'd basically go in light, try and get an eye on the ground of the giant's monastery so that when Gamble comes here, we could pr pr approximate how he's going to approach and maybe see... We'll probably go in from the top, but if we can see a way in, that would be... That would be useful to us. Right, so, uh... Someone probably raised... I, I, oh, yeah, it would be Jailbird, since she knew people who had tried... Uh, she she probably raises the idea that uh, well you know if we you fly if, if we're just gonna fall in from the top, they'll probably see us at some point. They're really good at spotting things approaching their their place, 
and who knows what they have to uh, ward us off if that happens without the protection of uh, the nowhere. But we're going to have to leave the nowhere to get on top of this thing, right? Actually, okay, let's talk about the scale of this thing. Would the nowhere be able to land on it? Or is it like we would have to jump out and... Because I'm in my picture, the scale of it of this thing is... Of the monastery? Yeah. The scale of the giant's monastery, in my mind, has been like... The nowhere would not fit on top of that thing. I could uh, be wrong. It could. No, it, it would be able to fit. Okay, then that changes things. That, but, would that... Uh, that might also be taken as a more inherent sign of aggression, so... Yeah. Yeah. But hey, gotta make a splash, let them know that shit's serious. The other thing that would be, you know, like, versus jumping out of the nowhere, it is, you know. We'd have to negotiate a way back down and out, I'm aware of that, or get picked up. Right, yeah, or, or that, that sort of the thing. It's like, if we landed on top of this thing, we could probably take off from there too and jump back in the wind tunnel to get back. Is it, do you think it's even worth doing the ground scout out, or do you think we should just go right to flying on to it and talking? Well, that's sort of the thing, you know. I, I, I think it would probably be safer, you know. It would be less likely to be interpreted as aggressive. Well, that's the thing. The ground scouting out isn't going to talk to them. It's scoping out the oh. joint. <clears throat> Seeing if we can see an entrance. S figuring out I mean, what at... Gamble's move would be. It's like, not one or the other, it's we're gonna do both of these things. Right. Or we only do one of them. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I don't think just scouting out on foot first is really worth it in that case. Um, like, I think we probably want to, you know, like... If we're going to talk to the monks, any, to try and talk to the monks anyways, I don't think there's a purpose to separately go on foot first to scout it out if we're going to go Well, here's the thing. Anyway. Scout, sc scouting out has nothing to do with talking to the monks. It's about figuring out how Gamble would likely approach. No, right. I get that. But if we also go there to talk to the monks... Which wasn't... like. All right, let's just. That, let's that just... Was no, no, no. <clears throat> but I'm tight. So, like, the plan to like, if we were to do the like, fly over there and drop in to try and talk to them, right? That plan. Yeah, that's about connecting with the monks. The other one is yeah. about, like, yeah, they have separate purposes. Right. Right. I get that. I get that. But if we do go and talk to them. Can't we just gather, you know, look at the place when we do that? Do we need to separate, take a separate trip to scout it out? Like, I think we can... Okay, we could probably, if we talk to the monks yeah. from above, then yeah, we could probably scout it out from within, so... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's just do the first one then. Catch the winds, land on, land on it, and talk to them. And we'll just deal with the fact that they're going to think we're aggressors. And we'll try and... I mean, we could also try to talk to them on foot, too, if you want to... Not really. Know, ...take I... this risk of... But that's up to you. Well, it's also that area is risky because it's in the middle of a war zone. Yeah. So going on foot, we have to contend with that. We may as well go, go o literally go over everyone's heads and then try and get back out. We may as well just deal with the monks f thinking we're a bit aggressive than uh... pushing our way through the Custer and Tarrant military. So Corrin scratches his head and uh, says, hey, if the whole idea is that you'll seem aggressive, what if you may, what, I mean, couldn't you go up to those wind whatevers and uh, like shrink? You have that, right? Y yes, I have the, they I still have the suit. Then they wouldn't be able to see you if, uh, to see you coming down, probably. Then so I'd have to trust you alone, though. Yeah, and I'd have to get back onto the vehicle. Australia points well, out. You... Uh, oh, I I have the separate shrinking thing. You could take someone else with you. That still doesn't answer, but 
I mean, unless I go down and talk to them and then I and then put we pull the vehicle in. Well, no, but you can. Yours can fly. Mine can fly. You want me to then yeah. fly back up and try to get back on a mo on the ship while it's moving in the wind tunnel, or just fly back down or, or just just, fly all the yeah, way back if you to just base? Flew, yeah, essentially. I think that was the idea that if you just you know using the wind tunnel and already in the you know flying things small will catch the wind tunnel catch the wind easily enough. Well, you think about it, less people, you show up, you're all, if you just show, if you just make yourself known once you're already in there, you're only, if you're only one or two people, or even just like three, there, it won't be as big a show of aggression as landing on them with a tank. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I suppose I'm, suppose I'm going then, I'm not looking forward to the wind tunnel, but who's coming with me? So we'll come oh, with this. you. Okay. Axe, this, I'll just have you know this is a peace mission. Oh. Hmm. Well. Lotus might be wise to. Fine. Take. Yeah, <laughs> Aegis, look, Aegis looks at Lotus. You'd probably be able to see more on their level. Perhaps. Oh, it's because he. Uh, is it because Lotus is old? Anyway, <laughs> you can make you can make how many more people shrink? I thought uh, we only had the uh, one. Nastreya uh, scratches her head. Uh, well, we have the. I, I was given the shrink uh, device. Uh, they never said it only. I assumed it only worked on one person, but maybe if multiple people touch it. We could experiment. We've got some time. Maybe we could, maybe we could install it in the nowhere, just shrink the entire base. We test it out and it shrinks, but we don't, and it just crushes all of us inside of it. One hell of an ending to the campaign. Yeah, and Australia, yeah, just says, okay, anyone uh, want to volunteer to see if this shrinks multiple people? I suppose I better. Well, here, yeah, I, I, I might as well see if okay, this works. Okay, so starting with uh, two people then. Nastray needs to figure this out, so she'll be one of them. So who's going to try and shrink with her? Uh, Azora will volunteer, you know. Okie dokie. Or Azora. Rip Azora. Rip Azora. Alright. She figures it out. I didn't have to roll twice, so it was already 11. Alright, so. Uh, yeah, Nostria, like, fiddling with it, uh, activates it, and yeah, both of you shrink down. Oh. Perfect. Uh, and she activates it again. You both come back up, and uh, she reasons that. Probably with like she she saw like a sort of area of a, a very small area of effect thing there, and she reasons just by touching, this could take this could take three people. And I'll already be and I'll already be shrunk because I've got the suit. So yeah, we can get four we can get four of us onto the monastery. So then the problem becomes, uh, well then wait a minute y y the if you're shrunk, oh you can you your thing can fly, but catching the wind tunnel, I I don't isn't it a little bit up there? Even at the top of the wall? This I was, guess I'll just have to fly up to it. And what about everyone else? I well, his remember what that other guy, when I got shrunk, when he was on my person, he got shrunk as well. I guess everyone could just ride in my pocket. Oh, that... I forgot about that. Uh, th wasn't that very painful for him? Uh, Jailbird <laughs> points out. Was it? He, he acted like it. I... 
Aegis genuinely Gilbert doesn't remember. Gilbert could be one of the ones that come with us. That way, it's two people who can fly and carrying. That's know, a oh, that's a good fly. that's a good fort. Yeah, you could carry. You, we could each carry a. Well, only one of us would be able to carry a shrunk person with the radius of the thing, but. All right. If we're both, if we're all shrunk down, I, I'm, I'm reasonably certain that my uh, hydraulics here could carry someone. Yeah. Well, there uh, we. Do you think you're strong enough to carry someone, Chief? Not full size, but no, Squirt not. Squirt cube law. You're stronger when you're small. We could, we could test it out. Yeah, let's test this out. So, so someone's gonna get Aegis will shrink, someone else shrink, and Aegis is gonna see if he can carry them. <laughs> if not, then uh, because right, Aegis so needs to shrink to fly, unlike yeah. <laughs> unlike Jailbird. <laughs> also, hmm. oh, I was still picturing this as like shrunk and Jailbird though too. I guess it doesn't have. It to doesn't be. have uh, Jailbird doesn't need to shrink. She just needs to carry shrunk people, so she could actually just carry everyone. Well, everyone who's shrunken. Yeah. Meanwhile, Aegis just shrinks and then flies because he has to shrink to fly. <laughs> Don't you know what? We've dallied. Carry. We've gone back and forth on this for fucking too long. Jailbird's gonna carry some shrunk people, and Aegis will be shrunk and fly along. Let's go to this meeting. We've yeah. just waffled for so far. Okay, cool. So you're taking. This. So Jailbird's not gonna shrink, which means you're gonna take three shrunken people that she's gonna carry. Yeah, and then Aegis will, and then Aegis will fly. So I All guess right. we'll take. We're obviously taking Lotus, and I, I suppose. Right. It... Axe and Azora? I mean, yeah, Axe and Azora. Hey, yeah. hey we just play your characters. You don't need to care <laughs> about us. <laughs> it makes no sense and... to bring Axe on a peaceful negotiation mission, but he's a player character. He kind of has to be cruel. We're not going to go peaceful. We, we don't want to broadcast aggression, so we're not going to take our vehicle. And instead, we're just going to bring Axe and Azora to communicate. You know, <laughs> lack of. It's called attack. big stick diplomacy. <laughs> this is what we call ludo narrative dissonance. <laughs> the story demands that we br that Aegis brings the two best fighters to a peace mission. <laughs> but hey, we're bringing Lotus, so I think this works yeah. out. Neutrally. So what you're saying, Snake is. Yeah, had this been an RPG, the single If this had been an RPG have... and there were no feelings attached to who I picked, if I was just going purely optimally, Axe would not be on this mission. Neither would no. Azora. Actually, Azora might be, because she has proven herself good in diplomacy before. From a very yeah, rational I was gonna perspective. Say, she, like, you know, she was part of, a big part of negotiating with regents to, like, surrender. Like, I don't know, Axe is a good diplomat. I'd bring Cole Daddy. I'd go grab him and. <laughs> Why isn't Cole Daddy a party member, Neil? I don't know. You couldn't. You couldn't. You didn't recruit him. Why didn't we recruit him? There was been no sense in taking him out of his element. He had his place in life, and that was <laughs> him. Um, him, him, put him and Ape. Fucking this campaign is just full of character of lost party members. We could have had an Ape and a Cole Daddy. I wouldn't bring Korm. He's not good at negotiating. It's always about money with him. I think Nostria should be able to actually see the magical angle of it. Anyway, yeah, let's go. We're gonna climb the right. climb the walls and then fly up into that wind tunnel. Aegis so is not one, looking forward to this. One last scruple here. Uh, the whole point of uh, shrinking down there, the whole point of shrinking down is that they won't spot you, uh, flying down there and won't, like, open fire. And if Jailbird is not going to be shrunk, she's going to be a target. She's been shot at a lot. Hey, Snake, I have an idea. Just shrink everyone. Shrink and They don't, the well, too. we've had it on good authority that they don't go to lethal force. So... Right away. 
Right. Don't go to Lethal Fourth if it's if they don't have to. And but... no one's ever dropped on them before. We'll have to do the essentially. We're gonna have to go hard and fast, but negotiate. So we're gonna have to. If well, they if they knock out Jailbird, I don't think she survived the fall from like 40, 40 stories or whatever it is. Well, okay then. I said let's stop faffing around and go. But if we want to keep faffing around, we can figure <laughs> this out. Me this, Mark Campbell we have is... spent so long arguing over things that will probably this work out that... anyway. No, it's not that this is a faff. It's just that this is something that probably will happen to her. Meanwhile, she won't do it. It's just that, you know. Hmm. Meanwhile, Gamble is climbing into the... Climbing yeah, Gamble's... The Gamble's we're gonna he turn up and to... Gamble will already be there. He's just... Gamble didn't plan, he just went. And that's why he's a winner. He's been planning for ages. No, he hasn't. He, we just know it's taken ages for him to do anything. That doesn't mean he was planning. Could have been acting all that time. <sighs> boy, boy, boy. Chains of commanding. Uh... I think we're going to just take... I'm going to take the risk on this one. All right. You know, understand. maybe get... Maybe Gamble isn't that smart. Have you ever thought about that? Okay, so yeah, you're climbing up the walls. He uh, made axe. Uh, yeah, so once you reach the top of the walls, uh, I'm assuming Azura, Lotus, and Axe are already shrunk. I presume yeah. so. Yeah, we're just yeah. flying. We're just flying up there. Then just flying up the sides. Yeah. Wait, did you say you also shrunk Axe and stuff? Yeah, Axe yeah. is shrunk. You're all small. You're Jailbird all being carried. Oh, her... This is Jail. <clears throat> no. Jesus is wrong. Her, she has all her leather packets. Leather pockets. Jesus is wrong. Axe should not be this small. No. Axe is not taller than Axe. She has her official no one action figure prototypes. Alright, so yeah, before you fly up to like the wind tunnel, Jelver just looks at you and just says, Oh, Chief, uh, every, uh, if they hit me on the way down, I'm going to expect a pay raise for each cruise. Yeah, understood. Just, uh... Let's go. Best advice I can give, just try not to look threatening. Oh, why, what's threat? What, there's not a threatening thing about my looks. And let's go. Are, question, are we carrying weapons? Uh, yeah, everything on your person. Okay. Uh, shrunk down, unless you wanted to leave your weapons behind. That's what, that's what I'm asking, you know. Like, are, are, they, are we, are we, you know? I'll leave, to, I'll leave that to, I'll leave that to your discretion. I'm going to say that Aegis has not brought weapons. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Jailbird's um, absolutely left her right, the rifle behind, as well as the, cool. the, the Clockwork Knight's sword. She, she doesn't, if she's going to be seen, she doesn't, at least wants to not be seen armed. <laughs> yeah. Azora will keep her, like, shield, but... She's going to leave her sword in the care of Reyna. Okay, so yeah, you both catch uh, the wind tunnels and you're flying forward. Uh, it's uh, going to be about, it's about like a, probably like a 10 minute, 10 or 20 minute flight uh, through the wind tunnel speed uh, towards over the monastery. As you're flying, you look down, you see just this bird's eye view of... Uh, you know, just like there's just like various like troops just like clashing with each other. Uh, people uh, like around the monastery, uh, further away from the monastery, they're all mostly in trenches, uh, dealing with a sort of like like these sort of like shellings that are just kind of popping off around them. Uh, and the monastery itself is just in the middle of it all completely there's like a probably like a small radius around it where like people are just completely held off by uh, the monk's efforts and uh it's got this very uh the uh how to describe it like the monastery has uh it's you know it, it's got one of those uh designs where it's almost like 
uh, like, how do you describe it? It's like, it's, it's like, you know, it has like several walls, you know, in like rings almost, you know what I'm talking about? Those like a kind of, si like a kind of citadel wall? Uh... Yeah, citadel -y. uh, sort of, uh, you know, it, it is sitting at the top of like, uh, at, at the top of a, at the top of a, of a large hill. Uh, along with its own foundation, like okay, okay, you know, walls like it's like like this almost, but uh, with like further like rings of walls around it to ward yeah. people off. You know what? As we're kind of approaching it, Aegis does like um, try and fly ahead, to catch up to Jailbird. Yeah. Um, he just tells her, "I'll go, I'll go ahead of you. Try it. Try and make sure they know we're coming peacefully." Okay, uh, what's, uh, what's the signal? You'll see. Don't, don't really see have it. one. I'll get, <laughs> get thumbs up. Got good eyesight, right? I'll wait a, I'll wait a few minutes. Yeah, if I don't come back in ten minutes, uh, mission's probably a fit. Well, not come back, no, sorry. Scratch, rewind that. Yeah, give it ten minutes. If you're coming down and I look like I'm dead, uh, mission was a failure. Oh, noted. Well, try not to die, Chief. I'll try. Aegis died. Sadly, Aegis died on the way home. So yeah, it, when as we're approaching the walls, Aegis is going to like yeah. basically pull ahead and try and fly down. Yeah. Dip down. Yep. You're, as you're out of the wind tunnel, you get the uh, the sort of uh, initial shock of just the sudden deceleration. Uh, but you are over the uh, you are over the monastery, and you can start just flitting down. Yep, and that's what roll, I do. Roll decks for me. Is this how Aegis dies? Just forgets how the suit works. <laughs> yeah, rolling is Aegis. This is a bad start. <sighs> the final session too. I'm like. That's, that's Probably not even going to get his yeah. alignment on the final session. <laughs> I've endangered myself to make a plan succeed already. I just exited the damn wind tunnel and decided I'm going to go <laughs> first alone. I'm on... Well, good. I'm on alignment right good now. Good job. You earned uh, that XP for the final session. I oh, hope wait, you're yeah, doesn't the, uh... oh, yeah, well, M, you can't the... just go, damn, I can't believe you're going to fail your alignment. Oh, good, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't the uh, fairy armor? I, I, didn't I say that the fairy armor gives you a plus one when you're trying? I do not remember, to be honest. But I I'll believe I did. That sounds correct because I remember yeah. us talking. It was about either a plus. Attack. It was either a plus one or a uh, roll twice to get better result. Well, which Might which? Might actually be that. That does sound familiar. Bella had that, so it would make when sense. We're shrinking. Which shall it be? Is that a ten or am I rolling again? Uh, roll it again. I think, okay. I think it'll be roll twice to get better results. That's okay. what Bella had. Because that's, that's always more interesting. Yeah. Alright. Cool. It's not a 10. It's a 12. And that's because you rolled to Vegas. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I knew that would be the... I rolled right, that and so I yeah. thought, well, I've succeeded, but I'm going to get a snippy comment. <laughs> So yeah, uh, sort of just catching uh, like the regular breezes, uh, using uh, the suit to its full extent. Like you're sort of darting uh, towards the monastery, uh, very uh, and uh, yeah, they they don't seem to notice you. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna say you uh, get like you know sort of just you manage to land just sort of uh, on uh, the roof of one of the monastery's uh, you know topper you know upper buildings. And they, none of them seem to have uh, taken notice that there is an intruder in their midst. Okay. There's an intruder. They, there's uh, an intruder in our midst. They're very much. They're sort of a uh, monks are sort of a uh, patrolling around, uh, just sort of like in circles around. You know, like again, it's got this very like you know ring structure to it. Uh, you're in one of the inner more parts. Uh, there are you know monks just sort of uh, at at the walls that are uh, uh, throwing. Shit, throwing things down uh, at, at anyone who's trying to approach from the ground. They all seem very. They, they, they all they're all very stoic. Like 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 they're all very much under. Like they, they, but they, you do get the impression that like they're all you know 
understanding that like this is like this is like the toughest spot they've ever been in probably mm. um i'm gonna look for one who like i'm kind of scanning around I'm looking for someone who looks like he's more standing guard or doesn't look like if everyone's moving around throwing stuff i'm keeping my eye up someone who's just kind of stood still or in a slightly more relaxed position let's say right yeah all right uh roll disturb realities At least succeeding for once. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What here is useful or valuable to me? All right. So uh, there is one monk uh, who uh, to describe what they're wearing. Uh, they sort of have like these uh, like leather rags almost that they wear uh, on their body. Uh, they carry uh, these. Uh, pretty, you know, sort of, like, rustic metal st stabs that have, uh, like, gears at the end of them. And, uh, have these, uh, these masks that can come down as, these helmets that can come down, like, as visors. Right. Uh, made up, made up of that same sort of, you know, rustic metal material. Uh, one of them has their visor up as a helmet, uh, and uh, sort of just sitting down, uh, apparently just eating lunch. Oh boy, I'm gonna ruin this guy's lunch. Yeah, he's just, just having a sandwich. Yeah, okay. Aegis um is gonna like, he's gonna flip down um and like a few steps away, so like this he couldn't just instantly fucking clobber Aegis. And he's got and Aegis is going to uh, return to full size. All right. Yeah, as soon as you turn to full size, you like there's a. No, the bit of a noise you make when you come back, and then like, he immediately turns around and sees you, and then like, oh no, I did that. I was like landing within his view, like no. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. As you do that, yeah, he uh, immediately like like grabs his uh, staff, like like just sort of like gets like scrambles to his feet. Um, Aegis kind of puts his hand up and says, "Hey, it's okay. I'm not. I'm not looking to invade the monastery. I'm not an enemy. I come You've with a warning." Already done so. I suppose <laughs> in a manner. You there. I suppose so. Look, I landed on the outside, and I've revealed myself for a reason. I mean, no, I mean no harm to the monastery. Mm. Well, charisma. Okay, so. Da -da -da -da. Let me see. Now then, uh. Let's see. Uh, he uh, looks at you and just says, Oh, yeah? Then relinquish, relinquish, every, rel relinquish everything on you. I want you bare. How bare are we talking? Armor. Off. Anything. Fine. Full search. Submit to a full search. Yeah, that's fine by that's fine by me. Uh yeah, Aegis takes off the oh, Aegis, yeah. Aegis takes off the fairy armor. He's probably just wearing like pretty right. simple clothing beneath. Yeah. He's called the distant you know... sound of jailbird wolf whistling from the sky. <laughs> just several gunshots <laughs> up into the spot. <laughs> wait, how does yeah. a bird Oh wait, no, of course she can whistle. She's yeah. a bird. He's called Yeah, few, where are you uh... trying to Yeah, see, yeah, he's called a few superiors over. Uh, who, uh, come to you, uh, yeah, they take your, your armor away, uh, and then they start, you know, searching you, patting you down. Again, what do you have on you? I'm gonna say I left all my weapons, but looking at my, uh, thing, probably, god, what would I have on me? I got the Sky Charm, obviously. Um, <laughs> I honestly don't know, I'm just gonna say maybe just the Sky Charm, because I wouldn't bring my, I wouldn't bring the Book Ops and Tactics. I wouldn't bring adventuring gear. Actually, would I bring adventuring gear? Yeah, I'm gonna say Aegis brought like adventuring gear, so he just has a few tools on him, but nothing like this is a weapon. All right, so you have the adventure. So you had sky charm and adventuring gear. I guess you didn't bring your coin. No, left would have left that back on the base. Got I don't it. want the fucking stat sixty four coin. I want my coin bag just falling into yeah. the sky tunnel. I'd never get that back. <laughs> 
And uh, your rations, I'm assuming. I don't remember rations, yeah, I, I guess, just yeah. in case okay. things have gone wrong. So yeah, you're stripped of all of that. Uh, they sort of take it. One, uh, one take look, took your sky charm and look, like looks it over and says, "I should." This is I, from a monastery. I also I should before. mention that I'm not alone. I have several friends who came along to talk about, to discuss what I have to to help me in this discussion. And where are they? Uh, Aegis just kind of like looks up. Hmm. See that's... Look at the sky charm again. Tracks. Where did you... You took this... This is from a monastery. Did you pillage it? I wouldn't say pillaged. We came across... Hey. We came across it and a... We came across it at an abandoned site. The brow. monastery, the birds gave it to us. Okay, sorry, I it's it was been so. Magical like, moment. Okay, we were. Yeah, okay, sorry. Let me rewind that. I'm so blanked on so much of this. Like my brain is a fucking thing today. It was a gift. Hmm. Yeah, he furrows his brow and takes him to look at it. Very well. You've offered up all of your possessions. You're walking among us. Let us go to the courtyard. As, uh, let's go to our courtyard, as small as it may be now. And Just... uh, see if we can't flag down your allies. Right. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. You're uh, sort of escorted. Uh, they have like these two. You have sort of, you know, these by like four people you have the guy you initially met like the the, sup the superior and then there's uh two others who would just have like their uh staves at the ready like near you to make sure that you don't do anything as uh they stand in the courtyard and uh sort of just uh look up at the sky and uh shoot some uh they they they, they shoot a small sort of like Thing out towards the sky like a signal flare or something yeah yeah and jailbird seeing it just assume okay that's probably a signal <laughs> that's probably and, uh, a signal yeah starts to fly down and uh he called the superior calls out to a uh, arm calls out like coming down from the top don't attack but be on the ready and, uh, yeah, Jailbird sort of floats down, uh, as best she can, uh, and, uh, lands in the courtyard in front of them. Uh, so, uh, is the plan here to just have everyone on shrink, or did you want maybe to have someone else, like, go off small to, like, maybe scout something out? No, I wasn't gonna be that surreptitious about, I wasn't gonna be that thing about it. I was gonna have everyone unshrink right this was yeah, uh jailbird. this was going to be straight diplomacy yeah so yeah jailbird uh takes the three out of her uh, leather packet uh puts them on the ground and just says all right one of them's going to be very big so uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um one of them i'm assuming acts or Zora or Lotus presses the shrink button. I don't want to role play for you. I think I, that I, was I, the I guess shrink Zora's button the being one pressed. who's actually used it before. Yeah. 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 Click. Alright. <laughs> yeah. As the <gasps> other three unshrink, yeah, they're all sort of on edge of looking <gasps> at Axe, especially. Uh, oh, God. That was horrible. It's. Is that how Aegis feel every day? <laughs> Azora, Azora suppresses a laugh at that. Like, she is caught off guard. Just a small snort. Aegis just looks at Axe. What is that? Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you shorter than an Axe. Most people are. Right. Yes, the monk, so but... The superior uh... monk just points out, enough talk. Surrender all of you. Uh, strip. Surrender everything you have. Okay. Wait. Wait. Axe has to. Does Axe have to uh, turn over his axe? 
Axe Axe. You yes. brought your axe? Yes. He's axe. You brought your axe, Azora axe. exclaims, the, turning the around, weapon. seeing him carrying the axe he's been carrying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, drop axe. that. Yeah, they're going to okay. drop that okay. right now. Okay, okay. axe put it in the ground. He says, be very careful about with the axe, okay? <laughs> also, also, you said everything, right? Axe, Armor, rip. weapons, submit to a full cavity search. Axe rips off loin, takes off armor. He doesn't wear anything underneath armor, so. Okay. <laughs> They're not gonna. There's not much to see down there. Yeah. Four wow. Inches. Yeah. We, we rolled this already. <laughs> no, 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 no. It all comes back. <laughs> it, it, it... <laughs> Those were giant inches, you know. That is a it's bit it's... long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using Imperial, I'm using Big Imperial. <laughs> yeah. You all strip off your armor then? Oh, God, Azora, yeah. Azora, you strip off your armor? Yeah, yeah, Azora just says, might take a while, but yeah, she, you know, unlatches and takes off all the armor and everything. Uh... Axe and takes off his nice bit little bear helmet. Yeah, and Jailbird sighs as she has to take off her leather uh, armor. What about, does she her have to take off pattern. her arms? Is she gonna be disarmed? Yes, I think so, yeah. Damn. But yeah, a Axe Damn. does yes. Wait, everything? Everything. Okay, and Axe just takes off everything. He's standing there, butt naked. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> they, 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 they're fine with however you interpret it, as long as you're taking away your shit. Be very careful with Axe. Axe likes Axe. Also, Bearhead is very nice. After, after you know, removing armor, it does occur to Zora to also take off the eye patch after a moment for getting oh. and then yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Damn. One of the monks look. Yeah, the monks look at you and say. Hmm. And says, "Is it healthy for? You? Is it healthy for you to have that off?" Probably not. Hmm. Let's check it first. Then you'll have it. Then you can have it back on. And yeah, one Knock of the monks. Yourself out. One of the monks takes the eye patch, just sort of checks it for any, you know, sigils or curses or the like. Nods and hands mm -hmm. it back to you. Yeah, I'm not a chuny. <laughs> But no, no, I mean, like, they're not, like, taken yeah. aback by your wound or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, then you're all submitting to a full search. They're, they're patting you mm -hmm. down, making sure you're not hiding anything anywhere. Uh, Lotus didn't actually have much to, <laughs> to surrender. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Lotus, uh, they, Lotus actually has, like, like, takes, like, eye contact with the, one of them. They kind of, like, look at each other and... Uh, they casually. give each other the monk nod. Yeah, casually, uh, one of them, the monk patting him down, just says, Mon Monastery. To which uh, Lotus uh, replies with the name of his monastery, which I've forgotten, so I won't say it in his, in his voice. Fair enough. Yeah. It would be disrespectful. Yeah. To try and. And uh, there's a small nod shared between them. As, uh, let's see, uh, Azora, what else did you have on you? Um, I had, so my armor, my shield, um, I had the sky charm, um, okay. the balance talisman in my notebook, yeah, your and notebook. the, I, uh, you know, I have my, um, rubies, too, uh, the uncut yeah. magic rubies, those have come up in ages, but. And your gear and your rations? Uh, no, I wouldn't have my rations. Alright, cool. I would have left those on the nowhere. Alright, well, that's all taken. Uh, from you. Da -da -da. Uh, what about your sword? You br you left it, right? Uh, no, I left that with Reyna, yeah. Gotcha, cool. Alright, cool. Okay, so, yeah. Let's take her. And so I left cool. the short short there. I, I, I'll say I left yeah. the short short with Nostra. She likes gizmos and gadgets nice. and whatnot. Cool. 
She can study the exploding flechettes. You're gonna be very unhappy when you come when you see there's just a pillar of smoke coming out of a, <laughs> uh, yeah. the walls of a cluster. Corn's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> and she was axe. just experimenting. Your mm -hmm. axe has been taken, obviously. Your hide armor, uh, your so yeah, your gear and your rations are taken. If you had them, your bear helm. Uh, did you uh, keep your uh, your teddy bear? <laughs> no, teddy. You'd... Teddy is safe. Chop. He is with. He is He's with cats. Chop. He is with uh, the cats. I'm assuming you kept your novelty beer mug scepter, <laughs> about being the king of drinking. Uh, being uh... I'm hey, you it left might that. impress the monks. You know how <laughs> monasteries are with like making wine and whatnot. Monks love alcohol. They might, they might <laughs> respect it. I mean... Nah, I get, nah, I think that would what's left up. Actually, okay. no, let, let's it be, let, let it be there. Axe had it on his purse and he forgot to let put... Let it be so. Interesting. Okay, yeah, um, are these going to um, be the kind of monks that have a brewery? Uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, adventuring gear, rations, and bandages also taken. Uh, as Are we gonna see a nice Trappist ale? Let's see. Uh, one of the monks then looks at your, uh, wooden, uh, bear necklace. Doesn't oh, that one! Uh, oh, I, does I have to take that one off too? No, he doesn't take it. He just looks at it and just sort of, like, touches it slow, like, gently touches it. Like, you know, the, the, the wooden bear talisman at the end of it and holds it in his palm looking at it Trax is a bit nervous because that's a thing he likes not that he's naked currently yeah the, the monk just sort of like yeah hmm. this is from the north oh uh, hmm. that's upright he points in the direction of no man's land of like the mountains and says yes that way yeah. Interesting. X from X from there. Interesting. Yeah, he just nods and just says, "You can keep this on." Cool. X puts it on. Here's a <laughs> here's a question. What? So who was with us again? It was Lotus, Nostria. No, it's Lotus Jailbird, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. And meanwhile, as they're searching Jailbird again, she has to strip her uh, leather armor off. Uh, okay. They're padding. I'm just, down. I'm just curious. Oh. What a, what? A, let's face it. Lotus probably doesn't care. So I'm just curious. What is Jailbird's uh, thought about Axius uh, running around naked right now? She, she's more annoyed with the padding down happening to her right now. <laughs> they're taking you Fair. Know, her various robot parts as they're as they're uh, removing her arms from her. <laughs> Hmm, that is quite annoying, actually. Because they are disarming her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As she's just sort of left. Oh, does her... Lotus strip? Do we get to see his eleven inches again? Uh, no. They 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 just pat Damn. him down. There. <laughs> they As, just nod at him. Uh, Jailbird has Jailbird is unfortunately left in basically just her underwear. You know what? I'm just gonna roll this ahead of time. Was it 2d6 or 1d12? <laughs> it was 2d6. We d yeah, it was 2d6. It was 2d6, yeah. Oh, there's Angelo. Nice. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> eight gets rolled for Wait. him. Yeah. And Jailbird just sort of left in her underwear. Which... Hmm. A bra wouldn't work with wings. It's probably uh, it's just a tube top, I guess. So there you go. You trust us now? Yeah, as they uh, point as they take all that away to uh, be stored somewhere, uh, they look at uh, the superior looks you over and says, "Trust is earned beyond. Trust is earned over many. Trust is earned over a lifetime. I don't find you malicious quite yet." Okay, well we're gonna have to we're gonna have to skip the trust part because we have much less than a lifetime. You're in. You're aware that you're in danger, but there's going to be a targeted attack on the monastery real soon. From which side? From the Tarrant side. There's a. Uh, dealt with their likes. 
well, there's a man named Gamble. He has a he made our fr he made Axe here. Don't worry, Axe isn't in his thrall. In fact, he wants to stab at the man. But it goes beyond that. He's going to try and merge with the monastery, and based on the capabilities he has. Well, what we've been made aware of and the resources at his command, he's going to be more than what you've dealt with from the Tarrant side before. Merge. What do you mean? Apparently his plan is to splice his consciousness into the giant and reawaken it. Basically... Be we won't let that happen. I, don't, I didn't think you would allow it to, but we came to give you a warning, because... No one in this country wants this thing alive again. And, well, if there's anyone's hands it shouldn't be in, it's his. It is to stay dormant. It is to stay in its, in its, in its position. It is to stay eternal. And he puts his staff down. We will meet any threat that seeks to change that. I don't doubt you'll try. Okay, actually, out of character question, should I reveal the Custer side of the plan to attempt to cripple the machine? And then say, we can negotiate, like, peaceably, it be left alone. Uh, I would, I think, reveal that yes, but I think, you know, do it tactfully. If yeah. There's a, if know, there's a way like, to tactfully tell them this, <laughs> all right. Like, um, Custer, you know, the other side is aware of this, and okay. you know, also very much does not want. It. Does Azora? Does they Azora want see. to field? Does Azora want to field this one? Okay, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Azora does speak up and say, you know, that's also why we, you know. We, the this monument, you know, respect that it is sacred to you, but it absolutely cannot fall into the hands of someone like that. In addition to Tarrant, um, which may provide some support to Guster, to Gamble, the other city, Custer, they know about Gamble's plans, and they will see the giant crippled or destroyed before they let it to him. Yeah, and... he flinches and says, they've always wished to see it destroyed. Well, this looks like an excuse for them to act on that wish. We will meet them with just as much force. That's another reason of why we're here. We want to try and negotiate them down to spare any potential bloodshed. We trust that you're going to keep this machine dormant and we just we want them to be able to see that. You but have standing to negotiate with the city of Custer. We've done services the for they them. Know about Gamble. We have we've done services for them before and our word is trusted over there. You believe you can own turn their dogmatic their dog their dogmatic uh, attempts to destroy our sacred relic? I can't promise that I can do that forever, but for the time and now, yes, I believe I can do that. Part of negotiating that, their Custer is going to need to believe with confidence that Gamble will be stopped from invading the monastery and taking control of the giant. And in order to make Custer confident in that, and to take, and frankly, in your position, any help offered would be useful. If you're willing to work with Custer or potentially use us as an in-between to work with Custer to stop Gamble, they would likely be more willing to negotiate and agree to terms. 
Are any of you citizens of Custer? No. No. Employed? No. No. We're free. No. We're freelancers. We're no ones. We are the no ones. Two, two of us aren't even from Hemlock. Aegis nods. I formed my I formed my outfit so that during this time of war, someone might be looking out for the average citizens. I had to throw off what neutrality my company had because, well, this thing being reactivated would do many to die. From the outside, I can see how one might believe that. How I could see how one might believe that. The, the that a but one might believe that Custer is more. One might believe that the side of the city of Custer is preferable to that of the city of Terran. So I understand that both are more uh, are objectionable to the highest degree within these walls. So. An alliance is out of the question, or a, tr a temporary truce. And I imagine you wouldn't want their troops sniffing around here. Look. We need anyone in here cannot. We, and the, the, the mere thought that this that the, the, the clockwork giants may be destroyed, damaged, altered in any process is not allowed within these walls. Can I ask a question? A hypothetical. On. I trust that you and your men would fight to the death to keep Gamble from carrying out his plan, but what if he does succeed? What do you and your men do in the event that he takes over the giant and assumes control of it? He furrows his brow, and uh, there's like a sort of like dark silence like around everyone else, and he says, We would each of us die trying to take it back. I know I understand your dislike of Cus your dislike of Custer, but surely what they offer right now is preferable. I'm not asking you to get along with them, not in the long term, but I'm asking you to see to see that what they offer right now is preferable to what Tarrant has in mind. Perhaps when we are dead and gone. If, the, if, the, if, if what you say is true of this gamble, we'll all be the first ones to die. And then it won't quite matter what we think. Not that it ever did to them. You think that you, be, you, think that you being dead means it doesn't matter? Aren't you, aren't you doing this service for the long term? Aren't you here to keep this machine in check? beyond just yourselves it is our spiritual duty then understand that whether or not you die first doesn't matter yeah lotus speaks up and says i learned when when my monastery fell the monks and the monks dispersed i carried those teachings with me those devotions with me. Believe me, beyond death, uh, beyond death, your monastery's power is on, your monastery's power lives on. And it is your duty as a monk of this monastery to see to it that your duties are fulfilled spiritually, corporeally or not to the best of its ability, to the be to as close as you can manage. We are but human, and we falter, but we can come close to the spirits, to the, to the perfection of the spirits. I'm not going to pretend that my word can get Custer off your back forever, but this is a pivotal moment, and this is likely as close an excuse as they're going to get to launching an attack on this monastery within your lifetime. Deny them that. Alright, so you're going to roll Charisma here. And you can add a plus one automatically because of Lotus. Okie dokie. Uh, if anyone else wants to assist. Yeah, can I? Hey, yeah. Azora did, uh, Jen. I've been arguing. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, I could assist too if I want to, but uh, yeah, I mean, just could. whacking out whacking out your dangle was a show of trust. <laughs> you just yeah. Have to come up with an argument, Axe. Fuck, Axe can't argument. Oh, I'm uh, I got turned off my character. Refresh the page. Um, Axe Dong, Axe show of willing, <laughs> Axe willing. <laughs> Axe willingness to just drip down to clothes. <laughs> Axe Dr displays his passion for these words physically as Aegis speaks. 